word, you know, and to see you. Well, after we got started, I was thinking, did I want water? But I don't think so. I mean, I'm fine. <clears throat> well, if you do it. want no. some, maybe yeah. just give me a little signal and I'll yeah. creep out. <laughs> yeah, I'll creep out of the room and go get yeah. some. Um, so, yeah, what is your objective to get well, collected here? Well, you mentioned, um, you mentioned a play that you'd written. Um, and that you'd done a lot of thinking about... Um, Places where alliances do and don't work, I think, was something that you had mentioned. Well, the play has, I'll just, well, no, I'll tell you, on, on, I won't go on and on about it, but it does have relevance. It was, had a dramatic uh, a stage. Oh, Lord, am I tired? It had a uh, reading, but not a staged reading, but a little bit of props and stuff, at the ERA conference. But it's about Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Frederick Douglass. And so I, I can explain the reason that it was appropriate that that be at that conference. Oh, that sounds great. Uh, which yeah. is, yeah, it's the lessons we learn all the way along about how when we're told by the massa that we have to fight over the little piece of pie on the windowsill, <laughs> how difficult it gets when we're trying people who are definitely working for the same things but have different views of priorities in political strategy or whatever. So now, do you want me to? Um, now you're even a little farther off. I'm a little bit farther. So than what I, I f it feels weird not to be talking to you directly, but should I mean, how does it look to you when you're looking at these interviews? Do you're well. Look at this chair for a second. <laughs> yeah. Pretend I'm sitting in the chair. Oh, all right. I think it'll be fine because we have. Just pretend I'm sitting right. Oh over yes. Here. Frederick Douglass, Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Yeah. And Bush it's right. not too bad. Look at the blanket, Frederick Douglass, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, and no, we can see we can see your face very clearly and your okay. expressions. Which one's better for my you. chins? Uh, <laughs> I worry about that too. <laughs> yeah, I think mm, I can scoot over here by the by the blanket. Well, no, you can just you can move the chair. I'll just look in between you and the blanket or something. Mm. Yeah, but then you're. <clears throat> I know it's weird because I'm sort of a ghost in this thing. Yeah. Right now. Oh, this is good. No, I'm. I am really glad it's a dialogue instead of uh, my having to talk on and on so that people would get tired of hearing just the one voice. Mm -hmm. I I think it's super. Is that how you've been doing it, more or less? So far, that's how it's been yeah. happening. Excellent. Um, uh, except for the um, group interview that I did um, a couple of weeks ago uh, after Jean Crawford's memorial. Oh, that. And um, I did not know her. Barbara was very sad to hear that. She yeah, died. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There were six or six or seven mm. people talking, and so and, and they all wanted to be interviewed together. It was Marianne Beal and Georgia Fuller, and um, Marianne Harsler and Lee Perkins, and yeah. See, now this is going to happen. And Ray Bridge, Marianne Beal's husband. Oh, okay. Yeah. And. Um, I'm blanking on. There was a woman who Marianne, was, worked um, with Flora Crater. Yes. Uh, um, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, anyway, Jean, one of Jean Crawford's very best friends, um, Marianne, whose last name is totally escaping me. Well, Marianne must have been a big name in our It was. <laughs> so I started to joke about it. I didn't it. realize. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, it explains Gilligan's Island. Yeah. <laughs> um, was what I was thinking in my head. Yes, I, yes. Didn't, I haven't said that yet, but... Um, anyway, it was a large group, of, and so they were sort of bouncing stories off each other. Mm -hmm. I had to do, like, no work. I basically That's, just yes, like, I zoomed the camera in for mine. Oh, that would have been fun, too. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of, and, and a digression, and you can answer more at the end if you want, but I do not know Jean Ambrose. Barbara and I have not crossed paths with her. What is her... Uh... Jean um, has mostly worked, I think, in, in Democratic Party politics. Oh, you said that. Or, um, yes. And so she wasn't like directly involved in the women's movement but um, has always sort of been working on the on the directly political side one okay. way or another. And her son, um, I met him at a function last year sometime. Oh okay. And he mentioned maybe uh, interviewing his mother. He works on the council, um, the Democratic Democratic Committee of Mount Vernon. Oh, okay. Or whatever their name is, I forget. Round you. Um, I went to one of their meetings and realized that 
you know, this was yet another tiny, overworked grassroots organization. I was like, I can't do two. <laughs> for sure. I can only be part of one tiny, and, overworked, and thank you not for getting paid grassroots organization. Thank you for staying with this one. <laughs> You're so welcome. Welcome. No worries. So, okay. um, yeah. So, but she's uh, in her 80s now. Wow. Well, and seen, yeah. has observed and, um, you know, sort of tangentially been involved in a lot of this history. Mm-hmm. So, um I wanted to get a chance to talk to her. I don't know. Once she recovers yeah, you know, from the bronchitis, I don't know if she's going to feel like yeah. organizing it all again. You know, well, I was just thinking we'll it's see. a shame that you'd have to make another trip. But uh, Well, I don't mind road trips. Yeah. You know, I actually like them. Yeah. And if you don't take 95, that's true. you can enjoy yourself. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So I'll, I'll be glad to answer, I mean, go through as much as you want to there. Um, well... Well, you were saying the play and also the allies. The, oh, yeah. Well, that can Questions be one. of alliance working and not working. You were you were talking about having thought a great deal about that and seen that happen a few times. Well, inside of, you know, like yeah. now doesn't work in coalition with these other groups and, you know, these sorts of decisions. And there's a place for coalition and there's a place for individual organizations to do their thing sometimes. Uh, one way is more effective than the other. Sometimes it depends on, you can't generalize about a coalition because it depends who the component parts are, what the component parts are as to how effective it will be. There's a strength in numbers dimension to that, but there's also the uh, extra work of trying to make sure that it holds together effectively. Um, One thing about coalitions in general that uh, needs always to be uh, an envelope to be pushed is uh, Bernice Johnson Regan, the, the mother of Sweet Honey in the Rock and mm-hmm. Freedom Singers, I guess. I'm trying to remember that she was really involved in the civil rights struggle. And, yeah. um, I love her line, which is if you're in a coalition and you're comfortable, the coalition isn't big enough. Yeah. So I think that that is a challenge to working in coalition, but it's a way that you are living Mm -hmm. the advances you're trying to make. Mm -hmm. So I think that's good. I've been, um, ever since 1999, I've been either chair, co-chair, education chair, I've gone back and forth, uh, for the National Council of Women's Organizations, ERA Task Force. Mm. The National Council of Women's Organizations was set up in the mid-80s after the 1982 deadline passed because women's groups, because of the ERA coalition and um, now working not at cross purposes, but not working um, to accentuate the the way they could work together better, um, women's groups in Washington said we could have done better with the ERA struggle, so let's get together and talk more about how we can do it better. Hmm. And so it was set up originally at, called the Council of Presidents, and it was literally the presidents of League of Women Voters, AAUW, now uh, Ca- National Women's Political Caucus. I don't, I, maybe National Council of Negro Women. I forget how many groups were in on it. Mm-hmm. But um, as so often happens, the concept of it was not fully realized because the presidents of these organizations in some cases didn't live in Washington. Usually an executive director would be working in the Washington office, but sometimes a president would be from Texas or somewhere. So it was hard to get them together. Mm -hmm. So they would send the executive director, let's say, and after a while she, being overworked, would send her deputy, and after a while, so that the whole thing, uh, not in an entirely bad way, but it ended up being people not at the very tops of these organizations getting together. Mm -hmm. And so it, has over the years turned into more of a, um, I say village well, where the organizations come together, share information, get information, talk about Mm -hmm. certain things that they as the coalition, the National Council of Women's Organizations can undertake or support. Um, It is, um, they changed the name, I think, because of that devolving from being the presidents getting together uh, in the early 90s maybe to National Council of Women's Organizations. It is, as so many women's groups are, working on a shoestring financially. Um, It has um, task forces. One of them is on Social Security. There's some very, very uh, 
high level women's uh, both advocates and uh, social study social scientists I should say and mm -hmm. e economists and so on Heidi Hartman who is head of the Institute for Women's Policy Research is on the executive committee I believe now or at least she has been um, so it's a very important entity but it again like so many organizations hasn't been able to be all it can be right. because each of the individual member organizations is working hard to keep itself going and so on so it's it's a big challenge just in talking about the challenges that allies have in working together it's because there are um, goals in common even an organization that has a particular goal around let's say women's health that isn't um, directly the goal around a women in media or women in sports other organization we're all working for women's level playing field and advancement in all these areas so there's a, a strength in the council being able to speak for the at, some, at one Four. point over 200 organizations some of them very small wow. some of them now yeah. and feminist majority and Institute for women's policy research and so on yeah. um, I would wish for more resources and more um, ability to realize the potential there mm -hmm. but what else is new with virtually any organization right? yeah right exactly uh, so but but again a group like that has the vision of how you bridge the gaps between mm -hmm. the component allies it just hasn't been able to execute it as well as we would love to see yeah well you're always doing it on the fly you know, oh yeah, you're always in motion. So that's right. There's no planning stage. <laughs> that's, <you know? laughs> that's exactly. There's right. no meta conversation. You just yeah. go. Well, and, and in some oh, go ahead. Well, there's sort of I, um, sort of two philosophies around um, coalition and alliance in mm -hmm. uh, in sort of the social arena, right? Across race and gender and sexuality mm -hmm. and, and this and some of it. You know, sometimes it ha one one camp thinks I'm not speaking very well. You know, one camp kind of holds to, we need to sit down and work through our stuff, mm -hmm. our conflicts, our disagreements, our misunderstandings, um, where, you know, you who don't know enough need to know more, here's some research, go yeah. do it, whatever. Um, which, you know, is one approach to sort of smoothing the ground, right? Creating some glue. Mm -hmm. And the other camp of, th of thought is, let's just work on a project and we'll do the other stuff in the process. You mm -hmm. know, those other... Um, the history, the working out, the developing of trust, these kinds of things, the education will come through doing this project together. Um, and I don't know which, I think a lot of organizations in, say, this big umbrella group, mm -hmm. right, that you're talking about, probably use different, those two different approaches. I was going to say, so I they may see not some <laughs> of each de facto, as you say, you're always on the move and mm -hmm. you have to do the, uh, you know, have the act of faith that you can work out the wrinkles while you're doing the project. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but the wrinkles can kill a project. But somewhere. the wrinkles can kill, exactly. That's right. So um, here's another gap I don't understand quite how to bridge. I mean, just I, I wouldn't be able to if I, if I knew how. But it is a gap between the women's movement organizations mm -hmm. of which there are many some of them the old guard some of them very new some of them in between large small virtually all online membership national chapters and states I mean mm -hmm. the whole spread and there as far as I know every one of them is underfunded mm -hmm. um, and what's underfunded I mean some have a reasonable budget but still could do so much more even if they had mm -hmm. a certain amount, a yeah. small amount more. So um, women as a whole um, economically are in the workplace far more and have disposable, uh, perhaps more at their disposal is mm -hmm. what I mean, to support such groups and yet I don't know how you bring the women who would be simpatica, mm -hmm. um, who have the funding but don't have the time to be a member or an executive in the organizations, to understand that supporting those organizations really advances 
Uh, first of all, those organizations are part of what opened up the workplace for women who now mm -hmm. are able to lean in, if you yeah. will. And I don't mean that specifically to Cheryl, but you know, just the, yeah. the, the workplace is very different because of the work of those organizations. Mm -hmm. And also, um, to have women in philanthropy, there are a lot of women who have at their disposal, disposal philanthropic funds to give to these organizations. Um, how you bridge that gap more, um, it's a perennial challenge, and it's, I'm not trying to indict the women who have the money for not giving to organizations they may not even know about, mm -hmm. but there is just how do we bridge that. There are some small initiatives, I guess, for uh, you know trying to let women who have the philanthropic resources know more about organizations that yeah. would benefit, and they would benefit by supporting. But again, it just seems like a huge, huge gap. Um, I joke, say jokingly, where's our Alva Belmont? Because <laughs> Alva Belmont in the suffrage struggle gave Alice Paul um, and the National Women's Party uh, not only Boku bucks, if you mm -hmm. will, but bought the house, uh, Sewell Belmont House, so-called now, mm -hmm. right up on Capitol Hill, mm -hmm. um, which is now Sewell Belmont House and Museum. Highly mm -hmm. recommend anybody who is interested in women's history to go there. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, again, that doesn't have the endowment that it should have and is sort of getting along but not uh, able to be all it can be either. Yeah. Um, I don't know how I don't know how to address that. It's it's maybe a little bit of a, a sidetrack here, but uh, it's a big challenge to the women's movement. Yeah, it is. I mean, with the with the sort of big donor possibility, I wonder how much that has to do with money and ego and legacy. You know, mm. I mean, if you give a hundred thousand dollars to <laughs> yeah. the ERA network, yeah. you're probably not going to get your name on a building. You that's know. it. Yeah. <laughs> you're not going to rename the amendment yeah. after you. That's you right. Know, I mean, yeah. They're, they're, and and well, that's I good, think yeah, at, at that level of class, right? Um, and I don't know any of these women, so yeah. I can't speak about them personally. But the trend um, at that level is, you know, to leave a mark on the planet, you know, in in a physical way. This a is a very Belmont helpful house. comment. Yeah, you know, um, Carnegie libraries. Yes. Um, yep. Grand Central Station. You know, <laughs> that sort of model, um, which is old, and you know, has it goes back to to aristocratic yeah. models. You right. Know? Um, but it could be that it could be that there's not going to be. You know, I'm not going to be a famous dead lady when I'm dead. I'm just going to have helped. Yeah. Um, maybe. I mean, um, it might be a yeah, lack a of concept, understanding. Yes. There's a lot of things that, not everything, but there's a lot of things, a lot of problems money can is, in, insulate you from. That's true. That's true, you too. Um, and, I mean, I'm not rich, but really struggling, mm -hmm. you know. Um, except for, you know, a couple of friends that I have through now mm -hmm. um, who operate in lower social strata than I do. I did not know what that looked like or sounded like or felt like in reality until I had the chance to become friends with those women. That's it was an point. abstraction. I knew it wasn't fair. I knew it wasn't right. I knew it needed to be fixed. Yeah. But I didn't know its texture. Um, and knowing its texture now... Through some Whole different perspectives, yes. Yeah, it's there's more urgency. There's mm -hmm. more, you know. Yeah, that's the the insulation from really understanding it at a gut level. Yeah, is an interesting thing, and you know, and again, there are women of wealth who do get it yeah. and do support things. Yeah. Um, but just it's it's not uh, the rule by mm -hmm. any means. It's the exception. Mm -hmm. So who's, know, who's not looking for money to support more of their work? But, oh, good uh, Lord, you know. yeah. You know, I mean, we can't all have MacArthur Genius Grants, though it yeah. would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Heidi Hartman did get one. Oh, did she? Um, I didn't know Which that. was, yes, they get paid out over five years, and Heidi mm -hmm. got it when it was, oh, dear, now I can't remember. 
but they upped the amount so that the payout was at least double after Heidi got it, but that was partly, I think, what either helped her set up Institute for Women's Policy Research mm -hmm. or certainly helped her grow it mm -hmm. in a way that uh, was, you know, yeah. if you could see more of the women. Uh,